one of the things that, that causes a lot of confusion is that people will get their results and it's a variant of unknown significance or it's LFS-like or it's mosaic. Can you give us um, some explanations of those three? Yeah. Um, so, you know, so first let's tackle the, the dreaded variants of uncertain significance. Um, you know, we all have genetic differences. This is why each one of us is unique, right? Some of us have blue eyes and some of us have brown eyes and some of us have type A blood and some of us have type O blood. You know, this is all because our DNA is not exactly the same. Um, and so, you know, when a laboratory does genetic testing um, and they're looking at our genetic code, it's not like it spells out, you know, and this gene does not work, and <laughs> you know, and you have an increased risk for cancer. It's right. not that clear. Um, you know, each one of our genetic codes is going to be a little bit different, and the lab has to sort out whether or not a particular change is, you know, just part of normal human variation, or if it is associated with, you know, actually causing the gene not to work mm -hmm. um, and causing an increased risk. Um, so when a laboratory finds an, a variant, um, you know, a, a different letter in the genetic code, maybe than what they typically see, if they don't have much information about that, um, they will go ahead and call that as uncertain. Um, now, overall, most, um, you know, most things that are, you know, initially, you know, are, are come in as uncertain, it do end up being classified as benign. Um, but some, you know, will be determined to, to be associated with with a, a real mutation and you know, the risks that go along with Lefranini syndrome. So when having genetic testing done, you know, it's important for people to be aware that that this is a possible outcome and to talk with the provider who's ordering the testing about you know what is going to happen if we find this um, a lot of times there can be variability in how um, laboratories interpret um, some variants that may depend on what information they have access to um, so some of the things that we do as gent counselors when we encounter variants of uncertain significance are um, you know, contacting multiple laboratories to find out um, how, you know, if others maybe have more information on this. Um, so this is information isn't necessarily networked across all of the genetic uh, testing services and all of that kind of thing. You're literally having to call about and say, do you know anything new that we don't have yet? Right. There are some efforts to try to coordinate um, sharing of information between labs. Um, there are some resources. Um, one national resource is something called ClinVar, where a lot of laboratories are encouraged to share their data. Um, and so that's a good starting place. But, you know, we often reach out and double check hmm. um, with laboratories that maybe haven't reported things to see if they know something else. Um, we, you know, will review the literature to see what else we can find about that. Um, sometimes there can be computer models that can help give us some insight into whether or not a particular variant is helping or, you know, would be affecting how the gene worked or maybe it's in part of the gene that's less important for the functions. So therefore that that difference is unlikely to make a change. Um, so we try to kind of piece these pieces of information together to try to give patients as much information as as possible mm -hmm. um, about you know whether or not this this has a, a likelihood of of ultimately being classified as a mutation or or maybe pointing more towards something that would be benign. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, depending on so generally when we find something and the the consensus amongst you know all laboratories is that this is just uncertain and we don't have enough information at that point in time um, our general approach then is to make recommendations based on the patient's personal and family history we don't want to be overly aggressive because we think someone has Lefranini syndrome when they may not. Right. Um, but if there was some indication to do testing, there must have been something going on um, in the family. Um, and so we, we don't want to, um, you know, miss um, screening for those risks um, because this mutation hasn't been determined yet right. either.